house on the left side. This is a part uh, of those uh, apartment buildings constructed here in this uh, uh, part of the town. And so, but we have a, uh, now uh, changing the situation. In the first community, the uh, Jews were owner of the houses. Here they could only rent some apartment houses. Later, this uh, community, the second community, was developing very well. It became once more the most important Jewish communities in Germany, <coughs> and they became more owner of houses. Uh, but at the beginning, they could only rent some apartments. And the second synagogue, uh, already mentioned, was on the other side, here, on this place. So you can't see no more synagogue. This synagogue had been uh, destroyed by a fire in the 18th century. So um, this, uh, the second community was developing very well in the late 14th century. But in the 15th century, um, the living conditions degraded. Uh, now the uh, Jews had to wear those symbols I was talking about, the yellow symbols. They had to uh, uh, pay high special fees. And so Jews decided to migrate. So they settled they, in uh, towns in uh, Saxony and Pologne. And finally, uh, in the middle of the uh, 15th century, the Jews were forced to leave the town finally. They were no more allowed to live here in Erfurt for more than 300 years. For 350 years, they were not allowed to live in the town uh, and to come uh, to the town for business. It was only in the beginning of the 19th century, under the French government, so in this period, for several years, this was part of France. It was the uh, uh, private uh, domain of the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Jews, the first Jews, were allowed to come back to Africa to settle. <coughs> and so, uh, in, uh, in 1816, uh, Africa became part of Prussia. And so, so the Prussian uh, administration, too, allowed the Jews uh, to settle in the town. And uh, this was against oppositions uh, of the people of Erfurt because uh, there was widespread anti Judaism, which was changing later in the 19th century to anti Semitism. And so uh, they didn't want to, uh, the Jews to have them here. The who for what? Uh, the, uh, the merchants, mainly the, the merchants living in the town, because once more, they feared uh, uh, the rivalry, the competition of the Jewish merchants. And they didn't want, there was a long, long, long discussion between the Prussian administration uh, which, and uh, the, uh, the people of, uh, part of the people of Erfurt, which didn't want the Jews to settle here. Okay, and finally, commercial uh, mainly commercial interests, mainly and prejudices, the both, both of them, prejudices against the Jews and uh, this rivalry, the fear of the conquerors of the, uh, the Jews. And finally, in 1824, the Prussian king himself decided that they must accept the Jews settling here in the town of Hamburg. Um, and so uh, they uh, were granted freedom of worship. They could uh, establish their own schools. Um, they uh, could construct a new synagogue, and we're standing just in front of this new synagogue. It's the third synagogue constructed in the town in 1838-1839. And this synagogue was used till the end of the 19th century, but the uh, community was growing, and so uh, it was not a large loss, and that, that's the reason why they constructed this fourth synagogue in the Moorish style. <laughs> Today, this synagogue, this old synagogue, which was used uh, for a long time as uh, um, a storehouse and uh, there had been apartments inside. And so uh, this uh, synagogue, this reason why the Nazis didn't destroy the synagogue. Uh, they didn't knew that this is no synagogue. We did only find more than 20 years ago, then at the beginning of the 90s, that this building is this old synagogue of the 19th century, 
uh, it had been restored, and today it's a meeting center. We have expositions, and actually, it's a meeting inside. So we cannot go into the uh, main room, but uh, we can go into the cellar. And let's go there. Persons here. Uh, like uh, David Samuel Salomon Unger, he was one of the first who settled here in the 19th century as merchant. Then Ernst Benari, an important florist, um, he was member of the town council too. And finally, uh, Alfred Hess, uh, he, he was a businessman, he was producing shoes here. And uh, those two are standing for the large impact. Uh, of uh, Jewish businessmen for, uh, to the uh, industrialization. So we had really important businessmen here uh, coming from this Jewish community. Um, but not all were wealthy people, so most of the Jewish uh, members of this Jewish community were working as artisans, as servants, as workers. Um, but uh, Alfred Hess too is important because he was an important art collector. And uh, we had in Erfurt, uh, in the Younger Museum, one of the most important uh, collections of modern art um, here in the 1920s. This important uh, collection of modern art uh, had been destroyed uh, by the Nazis in 1938, uh, when they organized this exposition of degenerated art. Uh, most of the paintings presented there were coming from Erfurt. And so, uh, the Nazis didn't give back uh, this, uh, this uh, paintings uh, to, uh, to the Anna Museum. And uh, Alfred Hess, he was supporting the Anna Museum. He was paying a lot of paintings which uh, uh, the Anna Museum uh, could buy. So he was uh, participating at the cultural, at the political development in the town of Erfurt. You can also see uh, here this uh, large synagogue the constructed in the Moorish style in the late 19th century. And it had been finally destroyed uh, in 1938 uh, uh, during the pogrom of the night, uh, in November 1938. Okay, um, two other things we can see, two models here. And so I told you that they had been constructed a new synagogue in 1950. The first plan was this one, to construct a new synagogue, which is representative. You could see this as a synagogue. But uh, uh, the uh, communists didn't want the realization of this first plan. And so uh, they changed the plan, the Jews, the Jewish community, and uh, they constructed this building which is not so representative in this building is still existing. Yes, not exactly. Yes. Not exactly. Yes, it's a place where you get... Uh, With the cleansing. For the cleansing. Okay, I will explain it to you. So it's the first mikvah I can, can show you. Uh, so in, uh, in the Jewish communities from there to get this on, there had been uh, really important rules of ritual cleansing. Uh, uh, before you are married, or uh, after you had been in contact with blood, after birth, for example, you had clean yourself ritually in such a week um, before you can come back to service, for example, uh, and so uh, or before you can marry. So this is very important. There is existing in every Jewish community a week. There are existing Jewish communities without synagogues, but you have everywhere a mikveh. And so uh, in this uh, mikveh you have uh, always living water, so the water is always changing. Here in this mikveh, in the 19th century, we have water coming from uh, the river Gera. And uh, so changing water, and you had to go downstairs, you can see the staircase, and submerge three times, and then you had been cleansed ritually, and you can go back to the service, or you can marry, and so on. This is really one important thing. 
This is one microbe we have, and we have another medieval microbe found some years ago nearby, and we can go now there to this medieval microbe, which is really important. The micro was inside the old synagogue. So here, in the Middle Ages, micro and synagogues were different buildings. That was quite normal for this period, that micro and synagogue had been in different buildings. It, but the micro is nearby the synagogue. So here we had the micro, and now we will go to the synagogue. in uh, the end of the 11th century. So this is the oldest synagogue, still existing house totally, uh, in uh, whole Central Europe. And it's really an important build. Um, but uh, so uh, when this, that this building is a synagogue we did find 20 years ago, when the historian analyzed this building, it was totally forget forgotten that this is the old synagogue. And so only 20, uh, since 20 years we know that this building is the old synagogue. Uh, because it had been used uh, in different ways. And so um, you can see uh, some uh, changing, some press of changing. You can see the ventilator, which is no part of the old synagogue, of course. Yeah? So it was used otherwise. This door had been closed. Uh, and so there are changings uh, in the windows uh, in the first floor. And this is really important. Uh, in the synagogue, we want to uh, present all the changes, all the different uh, manners of using uh, this building. It was not only a synagogue during the centuries. It had been used in different manners. Okay. But let's go inside the building now.